Hey guys, welcome to Boost Rodeo. It is good to see you on the channel. This is the next installment of our A70 or Mark III Supra build series. Today we are going to be going over everything you need to know about the power steering system, whether you're running a stock car or if you're in a Jay-Z swap. So let's get into it. So the only thing that you need to know about the A70's power steering system is that you need to man the f*** up and get rid of power steering. Real men don't need that shit. That's it. Yeah, that's literally all you need to know. So uh, I'll catch you guys later. Good talk. That was black just long enough that you guys thought I was serious, didn't you? I saw the look on your face. I saw you about to click away. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lie. I'm a girl. I love power steering. All right, so if you watched our last video, you saw where we rebuilt this power steering rack. This is the rack out of my 89 7M car. However, in 1986 and a half, when the Mark III originally came out, this was the power steering rack that came in all turbo and non-turbo cars. Now, this rack was continued in 87 and 88 when the turbo cars came out and is known as a non-progressive power steering rack. Now, what that means is like most typical power steering racks, it is a completely linear rack in the amount of assist it has. So in the Supra in 1989, they came out with what was known as the progressive power steering. So one thing you'll notice about this rack is it has this electronic solenoid here with a two wire lead off of it. So this valve actually electronically controls the amount of pressure and assist that the rack gives. So the biggest thing you'll notice with, one, with a progressive rack is that the steering feels pretty light when you're in a parking lot, but at 70 miles an hour you have a nice heavy steering feel that gives you a lot of confidence at speed. So let's look at some of the other differences that there are between the two racks. One of the most noticeable is going to be this steering damper. This was done away with in the 89 and later cars. So what this does is soak up anything like bump steer or any other type of aggressive feedback you might get through the steering rack. A lot of people don't like that, so it's pretty common that these get deleted even though they don't make a huge difference. Another thing that you'll notice if you're going through one of the non-progressive racks is that the inner tie rods are not symmetrical. One side is longer, and the other side over here where the damper meets is actually shorter. So they're going to have a different part number if you're ordering uh, than the later your car. So it's very, very important that you know which rack is in your car and you order the right parts for it. In our previous video, when we rebuilt this rack, we gave the part number for the rebuild kit. Just note that there are two different part numbers, whether you're getting it through Toyota or Gates. So there's one more valuable difference between these racks that you won't notice just by looking at them. The steering ratio is actually different between all the racks that came in these cars. So the early non-progressive power steering racks were two and three quarter turns lock to lock. So what that means is if you had your car at full left lock, it would take two and three quarters turns of the steering wheel to get all the way to full right lock. So in the progressive power steering racks, that changed to three and a quarter turns lock to lock. So effectively these have a slower steering ratio, which is gonna give you a smoother steering input, but also make it less responsive. So there was an additional change um, in USDM models, it looks like that change based on part numbers and some other information I dug up, looks like it happened in 91 that the non-progressive power steering racks actually got even slower on their ratios and went to a 3.5 turn lock to lock. So I'm going to talk about that piece a little bit more at the end, so stick around on what that really means and how to build the ultimate power steering setup in these cars. So next we're going to move on to talking about the differences between the various power steering pumps. So let's start off with the stock A70 pumps. So this is the pump from an early non-progressive power steering car. Uh, you're going to notice that the body of the pump is identical to that of the later pumps in the progressive power steering cars. The only noticeable difference between these two is the pulley size. So the non-progressive power steering pumps have a larger pulley that measures right at about five and three quarters inches. Now in the later cars, when they went to progressive power steering, they dropped that pulley size down to five inches flat. So the reason for this difference is because in the earlier cars, as I said, this was a completely linear amount of assist. So if they would have had a smaller pulley on this without having a way to bleed off the pressure, your steering feel would get extremely light at high speeds and the car would feel very jerky. Now the A70 really was a luxury touring sports car back in the day. So Toyota wanted it to have that nice, confident, heavy steering feel. But once they added progressive power steering, they had full control over the amount of assist you were getting. So they actually wanted higher baseline pressures. So what that did is allow them to have even lighter steering feel at low speeds or at stop. 
and as they bleed that pressure off at higher speeds, they can dial it into whatever they want, even with the smaller pulley. What that really means for you is not a lot. The pumps are completely interchangeable themselves. The part numbers for the rebuild kits for these pumps are the exact same, whether you're getting it from Toyota, Gates, Rock Auto, any other brand, whatever. However, the one difference is they actually take a different serpentine belt size. Interchange pumps, do whatever you want, but make sure you have the right pulley size that's matched to the rack that you're using. Otherwise, you're either gonna overdrive it and have too much assist or too little. So now let's move on to the Jay-Z pumps. There's a ton of questions online because everybody and their mother is swapping Jay-Z's into these cars these days. So basically you can use almost any Jay-Z pump. They're all the same. So I don't personally have a spare Jay-Z pump that is out of the car right now, but this is what the Jay-Z pump looks like. The pump is the same whether you're using the stock one Jay-Z non-VVTI that actually came in a Jay-Z A70. Also interchange that with a Mark IV pump out of an A80 or the SC300 GE pumps are also interchangeable in the exact same. I believe the, it's the Mark IV pump. It does have one additional mounting ear, but it has all the same ones. So they will all bolt and interchange between one another. So if you're doing a Jay-Z swap and you don't have the power steering pump or the one you have is bad and you don't feel like rebuilding it, you should be able to get a reman pump at pretty much any parts store or off Rock Auto for either an SC300 or a Mark IV since they were sold in the States. However, there is one Jay-Z pump that is significantly different than the others and it's actually the one that I'm running in my car and gave me a bit of problems early on. The two Jay-Z GTE VVTi that came in the Toyota Aristos in Japan, which is a very popular swap, is actually different from any of the other pumps. Those cars came with progressive power steering as well. However, Toyota decided to move the progressive power steering solenoid off of the rack and put it on the pump housing itself. So it sits directly on the bottom of the pump housing, so it's kind of hard to see when it's installed in a car, but it has the exact same two leads off it and operates off the same voltage. So what's that mean if you want to run that pump in an A70? Well, in my case, I have a progressive power steering rack in my 92. And I had the pump that also has the progressive power steering solenoid. But what that did is it made my power steering extremely heavy, almost like it wasn't working. And I troubleshot the crap out of that thing. I cleaned the crap out of the reservoir because it's pretty common that the screen in there gets plugged and doesn't allow it to draw enough fluid. So your power steering either starts whining or it gets kind of heavy. I went through that five or six times. Next, I moved on to checking the voltages, thinking that my progressive power steering ECU might be going bad. So I hooked up a voltmeter, had it hanging out of the glove box, and actually took the car for a drive so I could watch that zero to five volt signal change. That all checked out. I checked the resistance per the TSRM. And then lastly, I actually checked the pressures out of my pump thinking it might be faulty. So in that car, my steering is still a bit heavy and that's because I have two solenoids in line and I can only hook up one at a time. Splitting the signal, signal dilutes the voltage too much uh, and it causes neither of the solenoids to really work. So I found that the, the steering feel is actually lighter when I have the one on the pump hooked up and the one on my rack disconnected. In the future, I'm gonna address that. I have a couple different options though. So one is if you have an Aristo pump and you have a progressive power steering rack, is you simply just go buy a Jay-Z pump off the shelf. It gets rid of the solenoid that's on the Aristo one and you're in business. Or you can go get a non-progressive power steering rack, set that up to run with the Aristo pump and that leads me to what I believe is the ultimate A70 power steering setup. Oh, oh so in my opinion, the ultimate A70 power steering setup, if you're running a Jay-Z swap, is to run the Aristo pump with a non-progressive power steering rack. So what that does for you is it drops the ratio from three and a quarter down to two and three quarters. So you're effectively losing half a turn of steering lock to lock. What that's gonna do is make the car feel much more responsive, a little bit more jerky, but that still is not that fast of a steering rack. It's not as aggressive as something like an Evo or a Miata that's got a really quick ratio, but it's definitely gonna be an improvement and you will notice it. Another thing that I found in measuring some differences between the two racks, not only did I confirm that that ratio difference is correct, but I also found that the amount of travel between the non-progressive power steering rack that I have and the 89 one that I just rebuilt was identical. So why is that important? Because when I rebuilt that progressive power steering rack, I put in rack spacers. Now what are rack spacers? They're essentially a little bushing or a spacer that you put in between the ends of the rack and the inner tie rods. The ones I used were about six millimeters, which comes out to about 0.24 inches. So just under a quarter inch on either side. But what that does is it allows the rack to travel that extra 0.24 inches in either direction. So you gain a little bit of additional steering angle if you remove the bump stops. So why is that important? Because that means that the non-progressive power steering rack can supply the same amount of angle as the progressive one with spacers in. 
So if you are to add spacers to that non-progressive power steering lock, you're actually gonna gain about another six millimeters of travel on either side. Now, six millimeters or a quarter inch doesn't sound a lot, but I wanted to see what that actually means in terms of the angle of gain that you get. I set this hub up on the table and I drew a line off the face to measure what zero would be. Then I moved the arm for the tie rod mount just under a quarter inch. So that comes out to about four degrees of angle, which really doesn't sound like a lot, but when you consider that that is a gain on top of the progressive power steering rack with spacers, you're really gaining about eight degrees of angle over a stock progressive power steering car. So that's pretty huge. So while we're on this topic of angle, if you wanna get more angle out of your A70, the choices are steering spacers if you want something really mild and similar to stock. They also make steering extenders that are similar to a spacer, but they're actually threaded on both sides with the, both a male and a female. So what they do is they thread onto the end of the rack, they have new threads on the end, and then your tie rod goes on those. Uh, the issue with those is you can only go so far before you run out of teeth in your rack, and you're limited by that travel anyways. And you wanna have the rack stop before it hits the end of the teeth because it can destroy itself. Lastly, is you can always chop your knuckle and weld it. That's a little bit sketchy. I don't advise that unless you know what you're doing and you know how to weld cast iron. Or Agile Performance makes a really reasonable kit that bolts onto your stock hubs. It moves that pivot point in so that you effectively get a lot more lock just for a bolt-on kit for a couple hundred bucks. So it's a huge bang for your buck. That's more than enough if you're drifting. And lastly, if you want to go all out, Fat Performance makes an entire upper and lower control arm set comes with new hubs and everything already set up for a big brake kit. And I think it gives up to 65 degrees of angle. To be honest, it is the fucking shit if you wanna ball out and throw a couple grand down on a steering kit. So for me, that is the ultimate A70 power steering setup. This is so good! Some people don't like the progressive power steering. Other people don't like power steering at all. I do hammer the car on the road course and on the track every chance I get, but I also take it on a lot of road trips and I drive it to a lot of meets and events. So the fact that I can get a little bit more angle out of it and increase that ratio a little bit to make it a little quicker steering, that's a win-win for me. So that's it. Now you guys are experts on the A70 power steering setup. If you guys know of any tips or tricks that I left out that I might not be aware of, please comment below and let me know what they are because I'm always looking to learn more about these things and share it with the community. It was good to see you guys and you can check out the next installment of the A70 build series when it drops right here. All right, let's be, let's, let's be real now. Here's my power steering. Get rid of your power steering.